Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Clemente Collector. And on this episode, uh, you know, it's 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 a bit different for me. Um, it's a little bit somber. I um, obviously I like everybody else heard the news on Thursday that uh, Dick Grote passed away, uh, ninety two years old. Um, and um, you know, he's he's one of my favorite players of all time. Um, he's the second uh player that I collect the most cards of. And, um, you know, the news hit me pretty hard, you know, it was kind of like, um, you know, a family member passed and I know that sounds weird and things like that, but, um, you know, I'm going to go into, um, you know, what, why, why he was important to me, but to start off with, I really wanted to show, um, I, I, I found a really good clip of, of him playing, um, basketball at Duke and, and, um, moving up to major league baseball and a little bit of that. So, Let's uh let's put the clip on and then I'm gonna get to some cards and then I'm gonna get to kind of you know why he was so important to me. Dick had distinguished himself at Duke University, gaining all American honors in both baseball and basketball. Wearing number six in this Duke NYU game, he went on to set a national collegiate basketball scoring record of 831 points during his junior year. After serving in the Army, Dick Grubb returned to baseball. In 1960, the Pittsburgh Pirates won the National League pennant, and Dick Grubb spearheaded that successful effort. His hustle, team spirit, and sparkling play made him that year's most valuable player in the National League. And in the classic 1960 World Series, Dick Grote helped the Pirates become the world champions when they defeated the New York Yankees in seven games. So as you guys saw in the clip, Dick Grote was an amazing athlete. He not only got drafted to the NBA, he also got uh, asked to play baseball for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And um, some would say he's actually the greatest athlete to come out of Western Pennsylvania just because of his ability to play two sports. And um, there really hasn't been anybody since in this area that has been a two sport athlete like that at both major league levels. Um, could you imagine today if LeBron James played baseball or could you imagine if um, Mike Trout played uh, basketball? <laughs> I mean, how how unbelievably talented does somebody have to be to play both? And the thing about Dick Grote was he um, he did he did not play in the minor leagues. He went straight from college to MLB, um, which is pretty unbelievable to be able to do that. And uh, he even said himself, his second best sport was was baseball. His first best sport was basketball, but you know he got selected. He was doing both. He was taking a private jet. And he was doing both, and um, and and he went to the army for two years. Um, and you know, we, I think that's amazing. Um, he served his country. So basically, he came back from the army, and um, and the pirates, uh, the pirates owner just said, you know, we gave you a signing bonus, um, and um, we want you to quit basketball. We want you just to play baseball. And uh, he went and he talked to his father, and his father said, hey, you signed that paper. You gave them a commitment you need to live by the commitment you gave to them. So that's what he did. He, he, he quit basketball and he went straight to baseball, um, which shows something, you know, and today, you know, somebody who was willing to do something like that and honor their commitment like that. That's pretty cool. Um, so the thing about Groat that I, that I don't really, that I think is a misconception a little bit is he, he was literally, one of the greatest shortstops of his of his playing time he made eight all-stars he had over 2,000 hits he he won an mvp he won two world series with two different teams honestly i think he's being misjudged um you know he's not being judged based off of being a shortstop he's being judged you know 
basically with every position player, which I don't think was I don't think is fair. And I think I think honestly, um, he should have he should have made the Hall of Fame for for the impact he made during the time he played. And the thing about it is, is a shortstop has to be so good defensively that that that's why normally shortstops aren't as good as hitters. And um, and and Dick Grote was great out in the field. Um, him and Bill Mazeroski for five years straight uh, led the league in, in double plays for five years straight. That has never been accomplished since. Um, so it just shows you how good defensively he was. And a lot of people said he didn't have the biggest range. They said he's just very smart. Uh, before they did do shifts and things like that, he he already knew what basically where hitters' tendencies were. Um, when the Pirates traded him um, to uh, the Cardinals, he actually was sour towards the Pirates for a long time. He was really angry about it, and rightfully so. He still he still had a lot of great years ahead. In 1963. He got second place in MVP voting. Second place, 1963. Sandy Koufax won the MVP that year. So you're telling me a guy who won the MVP in 1960 and got second in 1963 um, shouldn't shouldn't be in a Hall of Famer? Um, the thing about it is, is you know, it's one thing to say he's on a Hall of Famer, but I never hear him being talked of of being on the fringe. Um, I really think, you know, the 2000 hits, nowadays 2000 hits isn't as many, but back then that was that was a really good number. It was. Um and um he was a leader on the field. The Cardinals said, you know, he was one of the reasons why they won that World Series in 64. He really came in there and he was a leader for that team. And I just think that's awesome, you know. The reason why I have such a connection to Grote is he was the he was the Pitt Panthers broadcaster for 40 years, 40 years. He was literally m m my Vin Scully. Like, no, like, honestly, like, I'm not like, he literally was the best announcer. We had Myron Cope. I'm not going to sit here and say we didn't have other announcers in Pittsburgh, but Pitt basketball was everything to me growing up. Everything. Big East. I, I, I'm lucky. I grew up and got to see Big East basketball and, and Dick Grote was on the call and, um, it was, it was great. He, he had such a passion for the game. He was so smart. And, uh, I was trying to find a clip of him calling a game just to, just to pull up like something so somebody could hear it. Cause I think that's the biggest thing is a lot of people who aren't local really never would have heard him. Um, so he used to he used to get so mad at the refs. He was literally the ultimate homer for Pitt. It was like to me, a hometown ref should be a homer. It just makes it so much better. It really does. And he he was madder than the coaches at the refs. I'm telling you, it was hilarious. And he loved when they won, man. He had such pride for Pitt. Uh, it was just awesome to see. It really was. And that's why that's why he meant a lot to me. He meant a lot to me because I. I experienced him in my childhood. I got to listen to him. And then I started learning about him on the baseball field. And uh, that, that just really was really cool for me. Because I have a love for vintage cars, but I, I, I never got to see any of these players play or, or really got to, you know, never had any of them as broadcasters like that. And um, it, it, that's why he's so meaningful to me. Dick Grote was such an important figure in Pittsburgh. It wasn't just me. He impacted so many others. Um, the TTM community knows Dick Grote so well because he he answered back every single autograph request he, in a timely, fast manner. He just loved the fans and he wanted to give back. I just, I, I, I honestly think that, that a lot of people kind of overlooked his death recently. Um, and it was more, you know, local to Pittsburgh. And I, I, I really, I really feel like the card community kind of wasn't as present as I thought they would be with, with how much he cared about the hobby. And like I said, he was always willing to answer back fans through, through mail and, and meeting them at games and things like that. I just think he was such an ambassador for major league baseball 
and, and college basketball. Um, and I think he will be very, very much missed. Um, so I just, uh, I thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, rest in peace, Groot. We're gonna miss you, buddy. I'll see you guys on the next one.